What's up, everybody, and welcome to the PlayStation Lifestyle Community Podcast, where PlayStation Lifestyle Forum members come to talk about all things PlayStation. Today, I've got Matt Beastblood and Wani Barra with me. You guys want to talk about yourselves a little bit? Sure. Uh, I guess I'll go first. Um, we were going to discuss our uh, favorite PlayStation 4 games so far, uh, but we were going to try to exclude any remasters. Um, for me, it's Killzone Shadowfall. Um, also, Drive Club. Really enjoying that. Uh, Bloodborne, for sure. And... I know we said we weren't going to include remasters, but I got to mention Metro Redux as well. And uh, for you, Juan? Uh, For me, uh, I don't know. I'd have to say... um, I don't know. Are are we counting uh, cross-generation games? Like PS3 and PS4? Yeah. Yeah, All right. uh, I'd say Far Cry 4... has to be mentioned at least in that discussion. It's it's pretty it's pretty good. I uh, I've had tons of fun with it. Uh, it's a good game. Uh, it cross. Uh, I have some crossover with you too. I mean, The Last of Us is of course it's fantastic. It's, it's <laughs> The Last of Us. <laughs> yeah. And um, I guess I would also have to say uh, Transistor. Tra- 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 Transistor Transistor is pr- pretty good. I've I've enjoyed that game a lot. Um, they're just a great a great studio. Yeah, I was really um I was really happy that it was free with PS Plus because that was a game I probably wouldn't have checked out on my own. You know, simply because you can't really buy the hard copy of it. I would have had to go out of my way to download it, you know? Yeah. And um so if it hadn't been on PS Plus I probably wouldn't have had a chance to play it and I'm really glad it was because I really I really enjoyed it. I thought it was probably one of my top three games on PS four so far. Yeah, I really enjoyed it too. I got it day one, but it's one of those games. It's it's seeming like uh, if a lot of the games you know you buy indies on day one, they end up being PS Plus down the road. <laughs> Unfortunately, but I don't yeah, I don't regret true, but I mean, buying then, them though. You know. Yeah, exactly. Because then you're like, because then you're you're paying for for having it first, for having it early, um, unless you want to yeah. wait like a couple months to get it. Yeah, and. And it's still a gamble because it's not a guarantee it'll come. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, that's why I, I, there are certain games and developers I just want to support, so I don't mind either way. And and usually those are the only games I buy anyway. So not a huge deal, but it does seem like a lot of games are coming out. Like all the big indies are coming out for PS Plus, but not a huge deal. I guess it's good because you know more people get to experience them. Like like yourself. I mean, you said. You will, uh, wouldn't have got, might not have got it if it wasn't for PS Plus. So that's awesome. Additionally, like I think with that game in particular, I think that they put Transistor out there like that, so um, they could kind of show people what they do, and then people are gonna come back and buy Bastion when it comes out. Exactly. Is it out now or does it come out next it, week? That's I think next it's week. Next week, the seventh, I think. Yeah. Right. So I feel like. You know, people like me, like, that's how I'll support that developer is I'll go back and I'll buy Bastion mm-hmm. for full price next week, which I probably wouldn't have tried either without trying getting one for free. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, same here. Did uh, either of you guys try out um, Steamroll Dig? I d- I uh, no, I didn't. That was free, though, right? Yeah, it was free at one point. And it was like... I, I had no idea that that game... Was was so good until it came to PlayStation Plus. I mean, like, I, I guess I would cut that too in my discussion for uh, for favorite PS4 games. It was good. It's funny people kind of like have been mad about the indies and stuff on PS Plus so far, but if you look at the Metacritic score, like of the group of them that have been offered, especially the PS4 games that have been offered, it is ridiculously high. It's got to be like eighty five or eighty six is the average. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure why why people get get so uh, up in arms about the uh, indies. I mean, they're they're good indies. I mean, it doesn't. Uh, it's just well, a different type of game. It kind of just shocks me either way. I mean, even if they were bad indies, just because the PS4 has only been out for like a year and a half. I mean, I know it seems like it's been a while, but it really hasn't. And 
I, I think it's still going to be a, a while before we start seeing like full AAA games on uh, PS Plus, and um, you know, some people still haven't realized that yet. You know, a lot of the more casual gamers, I guess, haven't realized that you know that PS Plus. It's not just they're not just giving you a game just to give it to you and just to keep you happy. There, there are reasons for it, like. There are incentives that they have to actually put it on PS Plus. That's why it was created in the first place. You know, whether it's marketing for a sequel or, you know, to try to sell some DLC, like, they do have reasons to do it. So it's not like they're just going to throw, uh, you know, like, uh, Knack or or some other game, like or Infamous Second Son on there, um, you know, just to give it to us. I mean, they're, they're usually uh, uh, an incentive or a motivation to do it, so... Um, yeah, right, exactly. And there has to be motivation on both sides, too. It's not only, you know, Sony's not the only one getting a benefit from putting these games out there to what you said. Like, yeah, absolutely. Um, for instance, like with with First Light, mm -hmm. you know, they put out First Light on there, which was amazing. But then I think a big part of that was to get people to go buy Second Son who hadn't played it yet. True, yeah. And I, I do, I Especially do think that when Second Son came out, so few people had had PS4s. You know, by the time they put First Light, it had been already a year after um, Second Son had released. So I mean, all those people that didn't even know that that game was even on PS4 at the time. True, and that also is a good reason that for to make uh, First Light in a standalone game instead of making it a DLC, because you know people not quite so sure if they want to get the full second son well although by now it's probably so cheap that it's not really a huge issue but you know if they want to just try try out first light it's a lot cheaper so they can try it out and then you know maybe get into uh second son uh because I, I actually have a friend that's getting a ps4 soon and i recommended him to get first light uh so that he could you know see if he wants to get second son because it is kind of like a smaller version of it um but that i also have you know, notice exceptions to the, you know, the whole rule, like we were talking about, that, you know, them having motivations to put stuff on PS Plus. It does seem like some games are on PS Plus just because Sony paid for it, like, because they really needed a, uh, a, you know, PS Plus game that month for PS4. Um, trying to think of one that it seemed like it, but uh, it definitely seems like sometimes Sony just does shell out the money just so they can have, you know, like maybe they were having trouble finding publishers to commit it seems like that's happened a couple times i don't i don't know if you guys noticed uh, that but it seems like yeah, that to well, me. i think moving to the six game a month system mm -hmm. probably is difficult to fill especially like i feel like to your point it's i see that mostly with the ps3 games yeah you know because not a lot of new stuff is coming out there's less um downloadable titles coming out if they are coming out they're really the PS4 version is the one they're really pushing, mm -hmm. you know? So mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of where that comes in is like games like um, Dishonored, which is coming out uh, for PS Plus next month. Yeah. You know, I mean, they they may be announcing a sequel. Who knows? Did they already announce a sequel? Uh, it was leaked. So. It was like a small thing, but it might be it was just a rumor, really. Oh, really? Right. But yeah, I don't think there's too much behind that other than it's a good game. They just had to fill the slot and they just paid for it. Yeah. True. Yeah. Speaking of the uh, the uh, six month or the six game games a month thing, when do you think they'll dial it back and stop giving away PS3 games, or do you think they'll ever do that, or what time frame do you give um, it? I think it might be a while before they stop doing PS3 games. Um, but. Yeah, they they it is they are gonna start to run thin, I'm sure. But I I I'd say we got at least a, another year or so before they take away the PS3 games completely, and I'm sure Vita yeah. Vita yeah, games I, will follow shortly after that. <laughs> yeah, I feel like January first, 2016, will be the end of the PS3. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I I think I'm, they'll still keep the servers on for it, but yeah, I know what you mean. Like as far as like. It being overly supportive. Yeah, the, just the PS now. Plus. Yeah, yeah, probably. Offering. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember the last time I, like, wanted to go back to my PS3. It's like, it's an, I just don't <laughs> feel that urge to go there anymore. <laughs> I know, which stinks, because there are games that I kind of 
would love to just have the time to play. Like, I really want to platinum uh, South Park Stick of Truth. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so hard to say I'm going to spend 20 plus hours going back to do that. Yeah, I've yeah, actually exactly. been going through a similar dilemma lately. Uh, I want to get the platinum for Spec Ops the line because, I mean, basically all I have to do is, is play it another one and a half times to get the platinum because I did everything else. But it's just like, it's kind of hard to go back to PS3 that much, you know, and I don't know. I do actually still play a lot of PS3, though, just for Gran Turismo 6, you know, um, just because there is no Gran Turismo on PS4. But as soon as there is, I'll, I'll probably, you know, barely use the PS3 at all after that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think I bought Dishonored, uh, like, I don't know, around a couple months after the, the PS4 came out. I've played, like, an eighth of that game, and I haven't gone back to it. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm too busy with 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 PS4 releases. I can't. I just I don't have time. I know. Yeah. Yeah, I have a bunch. I of was in the same boat. Backlog games on the PS3 as well, like like the Puppeteer. I never even started that. <laughs> oh yeah, I have that too. I didn't finish that. <laughs> yeah. It's funny, like games like Puppeteer was one of them. They just like got all the way up to the front of my backlog. But then, as soon as PS4 like came around, and even just the the simple PS4, um, you know, games like uh, it was a Don't Starve and Outlast was like the two first um, PS4 PS Plus games. Yep. Like once those were around, I just kind of felt like playing those instead of games like even though Puppeteer supposed to be very good, you know, I just kind of want to stick on the PS4 at that point. True. Yeah, I'm yeah. starting to turn into a bit of a graphics whore too, just because. Yeah, I mean, it's not even, like, I, that I need crazy graphics. It's just that I don't like blurry graphics or, like, low-res and high aliasing type graphics, which is something the PS3 games suffer pretty badly. So uh, I'm starting to get to the point where it's, like, I don't even want to look at PS3 games anymore. Yeah. It is funny how quickly <laughs> you get spoiled. Yep. 1080p. It's, exactly. Once you go 1080p, you never want to go back, so... <laughs> Definitely. And, uh, and Steven, what were your uh, favorite games or whatever for PS4? Oh, yeah. Um, so mine, we already talked a little bit about Transistor. And then my, uh, my other one is Infamous Second Son. I'm a huge Infamous fan. And um, it was a little bit of a letdown as far as the storytelling goes. I kind of liked the more um, you know, crazy stories, the first two. Um, a little more uh, comic booky with the uh, storylines, you know. And this one was a little more like based in reality, True. which was cool in its own right. But I kind of prefer, I think, the comic book tone of the first two. Definitely, yeah. yeah so do I. <laughs> That's my <sighs> only real complaint about it too. Is like I actually thought Second Son is is the best by far for, as far as gameplay, but the only thing i didn't like as much as like two or one is just the story like i thought it was a great story but it just wasn't an amazing story like one or two like i really really liked uh but you know the stories of one and two i thought they were both amazing they were you know unpredictable and i, I just thought they were you know really good stories and uh second son is good but you know it's a little kind of not 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 anything too above average it's too, you know? it's too vanilla it was too vanilla Ex yeah exactly you know definitely yeah it like uh and it didn't have like its own sense of like i don't know like a flavor or something, something like that i mean the first two infamous games had this this nice feeling of i'm a superhero and they're like i'm i'm in this comic book type of world and then the second son came out and it's like oh hey i have powers in the real world and what am i gonna do with this i mean also, I it mean, was great. Sorry. What was that? Well, I was just going to say, oh, the good. first one was also like, it, it, and the second one for that matter, they were both a lot darker. You know what I mean? Like Definitely. I yeah. mean, the first one, when, uh, spoiler alert, Kessler, you know, he kills um, Cole's girlfriend. I mean, that was yeah. kind of surprising. You know, you didn't really expect that. And then, of course, the ending, uh, another huge spoiler alert, Kessler was actually Cole, you know, from oh, the was fantastic. I mean, which was... Yeah. To me, which, that made the whole yeah, game like you for said, me. I, I, that's why I love that story. It's just because... Which, that made that first twist so much more powerful. 
Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that he went back and killed his own girlfriend to try and save the world. Yep. Yeah, that was such a powerful ending. I love that first one. The first one's at like the top of my list of PS3 games. But the second one, the story oh, yeah. still is good, but it, it falls a little bit flat. Because, I mean, well, I mean, it was a good ending to the Cole story. But I, I don't know. The first one had this this dark and grittier sense. I mean, I, I guess it also has to do with the, the voice actor changing uh, for yeah, Cole. Yeah, I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, One thing that kind of stinks, and I'm kind of feeling it this generation, though, going back to Second Son, is that they're kind of, they're afraid of taking risks. And uh, you kind of saw it, too, with The Order. They just don't take the same storytelling risks that they did before. And, um, because, like, Infamous, like, we all loved it, but that storyline is, they took a lot of chances. Like, that's way out there. Yeah. Definitely. It was only like it was a uh, for a uh, only one type of a of a player or like you know like just a, a calling bookie feeling. Yeah. That players like. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, I don't. They didn't try to maximize the reach, really. I don't know if the order played it too safe. You know, like uh, my personal favorite character was Sir Percival, and uh, spoiler alert, he dies uh, pretty pretty early into the game. Um, so I don't know how safe they played it. I mean, plus the whole <laughs> whole way they left the ending, you know. Um, I I I personally really liked the story to the order, and I mean, I did go into it kind of blind. Like I I had no idea that there were actually vampires in the game. I thought it was just werewolves, but um, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I did say it like thirty seconds ago, so hopefully <laughs> we should we should almost do one of our podcasts. We should do a um of the order spoiler cast, so we can actually <laughs> yeah. talk about what happened because there's a it was confusing and like you said, I think everyone kind of went in wondering like what it was going to be about and how deep into that myth mythos they would yeah. get, and um you know there's a lot of surprises actually you're right. Yeah, I have to say I was kind of fortunate to have heard that the ending comes abruptly because I think if I didn't know that, I probably would have been a little more dissatisfied with that ending. Just because it, it does set, you know, it's clearly just setting up the rest of the series like it it's that it wasn't like a it was kind of a conclusion, but not like a, you know, rock solid concrete conclusion. So, I mean, it, and luckily someone had said that it ends abruptly. Because otherwise, I would have completely, you know, been unhappy with it. But expecting it, it just kind of, you know, I was actually, oh, it wasn't that bad, you know. Sometimes, sometimes things can be that way with me. I still haven't played the order. Do you recommend that I buy it or I wait until like it goes down enough to? Depends. Price? I mean, depends how much you like story-based games. Because, um, well, I I actually did really like the shooting. But there is a, a ton of cutscenes. Like I say, at least a third of the game is, is either cutscenes or just, you know, like slow walking kind of storytelling type uh, gameplay where, you you know, you're just like yeah. walking from point A to point B or exploring or something. Um, I'd say about yeah. a third of the game is that. So, uh, but it, it is a, I, I still really enjoyed it. I know it's, um, and it did take me a lot longer than people were saying. Like, I, I tried to get the Platinum on the first time, and it took me about 10 hours. I played it on hard difficulty, though, so that could be part of it. But really enjoyed how the guns felt and how they sounded. And, um, yeah, I, I actually really liked the gameplay and the story in the game overall. Yeah, I actually thought the uh, length... Um, it was still like, kind of short, but... Mm -hmm. Overall, I think people really Over -exaggerated, exaggerated yeah. how short it was. It wasn't nearly as short as people were making out. And, uh, I mean, if you look on how long to be, I don't know if you guys have used that site, but it, it's sitting at seven hours. And usually I find that site's estimates to be a little lower than what the actual game usually is, just because, you know, a lot of people will put speedruns in there without, you know, knowing that they're supposed to separate that from their initial, you know, input for the main uh, story playthrough. So. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so it's definitely not a five-hour right. game. Which kind of... It's not a 12-hour game either. But, you know, this kind of brings us to our second topic, mm -hmm. which, um, do you trade in your games or do you keep them? 
And so uh, the order is kind of a great example of a tough choice. Does it, is it a game you, you, you hold on to, you know, because you spent 60 on it originally, or do you trade it in? Because, I mean, even if you were to trade it in, you're going to be able to get it for much cheaper later and at least get some of your money back if you want to buy it for your collection again. So where do you guys kind of land on those? Uh, I'd say when I was when I was younger, I would uh, sell my games or uh, and try to get some money back from them. But as I've grown older, I've realized that that's a mistake because I've I've bought every game I sold <laughs> when I was younger. I bought it. I, I, I bought it again because I was like, oh hey, I like that game uh, and I want to play it again. So I'll go look for it somewhere online and buy it. <laughs> so in the end, it's just it's counterintuitive intuitive for me. Same here, actually. Um, I've traded in two games. Uh, one was Call of Duty 4, which I did end up buying back. And then the other was Killzone 2, but the only reason I traded that in was because I was getting the trilogy. So you could say that I'm definitely not uh, someone who trades in games. I, I like to collect. <laughs> and, um, I, yeah, I just, li- I just like keeping the games. I, I just don't feel... I, I kind of almost feel like, you know, when people trade in games, they're kind of treating games as if they're disposable. Um, yeah. And I feel even more harshly about rentals. Um, but uh, w- w- what do you feel about it, Stephen? Um, I used, I, when I, on PS3, I used to do, I used to go on Craigslist and I used to trade people with games. Mm-hmm. So there wouldn't really be any money changing hands. Like I would get games from them, and then they would I would give them some of mine, and um, that really allowed me to play a lot of games for very minimal investment. Mm-hmm. Now, now that I'm making a little bit more money at work, you know i I don't really mind just purchasing games to give devs my money, but at the same time, you know, previously when you have limited income. You really have to make your dollars count, and taking risks on it every game simply because you want to support somebody is a little bit more difficult to do. And um, so I, I don't necessarily um, disagree with that anymore, just because I don't do it. Like I now I purchase my games, I keep them, I have a big collection, but that doesn't mean that I disagree with people that you know try to make every penny count. Yeah, uh, I've. The most recent um, example of tr- trading that I've done is on this w- website where you trade games for games or games for uh, for the website credit, and that has to be the most um, the most bang for your buck, I guess. And I and I guess last time I did that was a few months ago. So I mean, I guess if it's a good value, and, and it's a game I'm sure I won't play again, like I traded in Infamous Second Son for that, um, and I got my 60 website credit, whatever. I mean, and the only downside of that was that the selection on there wasn't as broad as a GameStop or a Best Buy or something, but I guess for a good value, I will trade in some games. Um, just out of curiosity... Right. Yeah, that was kind of my... Oh, so, uh, how big hey, is um, your each of your collections on each of your platforms? You know, it's like a rough um, estimate. A rough estimate... I'd say, well, my PS3 one has to be my, my biggest one. That's about mm-hmm. uh, 30 retail games. And uh, the rest of it's on on my account on as, as digital games. P- my PS2 games are like a small amount, like 10 or 15. And then my PS4 games are like 15 right now. So yeah, not not super big at all. Just a small amount. My game collection is actually pretty huge. I actually just made... I just moved into... I bought a new condo, and um, there's this kind of big closet, so I put shelves in, and I put all my games in there. It's kind of like a little game library. Um, I probably have close to like 200 to 300 games in there. Um, my biggest collection is definitely PS3. I have at least I probably have a hundred of the uh, physical, um, physical games alone. I think I have like around 150 or 200 total if you count digital. Um, 
I have like everything from SNES and Sega Genesis all the way up to PS4 now. I have um, like all the Nintendo platforms, all the PS PlayStation pa platforms, Xbox, you know, Dreamcast, everything. Yeah, I have a I have a pretty big collection too. Um, especially for the recent consoles that uh, like PS4, I have I think about maybe. 18 or, or 20 retail games and then another like 50 or 60 digital uh, like uh, on my ps4 on ps3 I have about 50 retail and then probably like 150 digital games uh you know I, and i'm not even including the ones that are like just on my download list I'm, i only count the ones that are either on my hard drive or ones that i've played and then deleted uh, and then on Vita, I have uh, probably about 70, 70 games. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. My uh, Vita <laughs> does have a lot of games, actually. But I think that's just because it's all digital. It's all easier to store. I have around 60 on that. Probably a lot of like small like uh, PS Plus and indie games, too. Like I actually got a 64 yeah. gigabyte for, for my Vita, and um, I still didn't even have enough room for everything. <laughs> 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 it was yeah. kind of a bummer, but and it, and it's funny because uh, <laughs> growing up, like I had a Sega Genesis, only had four games. I, I had a Nintendo sixty four, only had like eight or nine games. But um, then PS two was even less. Like uh, I only had like six games on PS two. But uh, like I I didn't really start getting super into gaming until I got a PS three in two thousand ten. So um, since the and since ga games, I, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I didn't shop a lot like for them when I was a kid, but it seems like games are uh, way cheaper nowadays. The, like they they go down in price faster. The used games market is much bigger now, and it just seems like it's a lot easier to build up a, a big collection of games than it used to be. I could be wrong about uh, that. Well, the but... name of the game there is um, accessibility. You know, with the internet. True. I mean, there's such a huge pool of used games out there that. You couldn't really access before if you just had like, you know, Funko Land or whatever small local game shops there were. You know, that pool is so small. You're only dealing with people in like your area. And now you literally have global market to pick from. Yeah, that makes perfect yeah. sense. I mean, because back in the day, you know, it might, it might be, you know, just your big chain stores like a Walmart or Toys R Us. <laughs> I used to get games there even. Um, but. And then, you know, Funko Land, which, which GameStop used to be called, or EB Games. Now there's, like, so many different things competing. You know, eBay, Amazon, uh, you know, is really putting a lot of pressure on GameStop, I'm sure, to, you know, try to step up the game. So, um, as they say, comp competition is, is good for the consumer, and uh, I think that's def this is definitely a case of it you know that's why the prices have gone way down it's much easier to get games nowadays than it used to be right yeah. definitely and then going back to um you know trading in your games i had kind of forgotten that i this generation i've gotten rid of destiny battlefield and call of duty <laughs> and i was thinking about it and the reason why I didn't feel bad about that is because I don't really value those games too much. You know, I don't feel like they do that much new. I didn't feel attached to them, like, whatsoever. I kind of, And I, I always have this... It's just a personal inkling that whenever I feel like a game is overrated, I dislike it much more. <laughs> like so, like, what? games like Destiny... Oh. You know, Destiny oh, is oh, one absolutely. of them. Yeah. That, um... You know, I played it and I was just like, I don't, this is not enjoyable really for me. There's it's no, I don't feel like there's much depth to the story. Like, I don't, you know, I play online, but I mean, it's not, doesn't feel that much different than playing, you know, solo. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't really get all the way up to when they had the raids going. So I'm sure that adds a, a, quite a bit of depth to the game, but still, you know, I just felt like it it really wasn't what it was built up to be. I felt like it would be, you know, similar, actually. I thought it would be similar to Far Cry. I thought it would be this big, these big worlds with tons of stuff going on, and you, it's basically just an FPS in a world like that, which Far Cry was, but, you know, Destiny just it felt empty. 
Yeah, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. Like, it, it definitely was way shorter on content than I think most people expected. And just the whole system of how they have the leveling system set up, I mean, you basically have to grind the same missions over and over and over and over again. Um, just to, yeah. you know, just to play the, the suppo- you know, the highlight of the whole game, which is the, that uh, Vault of Glass raid, or the DLC raid. I mean, I think you have to be like a level 28 or something, um, but to do that, I mean, you gotta do, you gotta put in a ton of time just to get there, and that's why I never even bothered. I got to level 20, and just gave up, and I, I found that game really disappointing, and one of the biggest disappointments for me was the fact that you know, you can walk around in the supposed, you know, connected online world, but you can't talk to anybody. I mean, you can invite them to your fire team, but, you know, if you run into a random person while you're playing, I mean, they, they, it's just silent. It's like, I, I really think that was a huge missed opportunity there, um, you know, to have, which I think it would have been a much better game if, if people could have talked to each other. I know they worry about trolling and stuff but that's why there's a mute button you know what i mean like i I just don't i just don't understand why they would do it that way yeah right i was actually talking with people at work this past week and um the uh the age of the internet has definitely changed things but now that it's kind of settled in i feel like the art of um, teamwork and talking online, like as a team, is kind of gone by the wayside because of, because of um, kind of just all the hate talk that's on there now. Because I mean, if I don't know if either of you remember on PS3, you know, Warhawk and SOCOM Confrontation were two of the big online only games they pushed at the beginning, and they actually came with a Bluetooth headset. Yeah, you know, yeah. that is yeah. a thing of the past, and nothing's coming with headsets now. You know. Well, because mm-hmm. so consoles come with. I guess the PlayStation came came with one, but you know, I don't feel like they pushed the uh, the teamwork and the discussion as much as they did then for those games. Yeah, I find that disappointing. Uh, it just seems like you know the most of the PS3 generation, it wasn't you know easy to talk to people. You know, there was no party chat, and uh, not everybody had a mic. So, and it seems like that's kind of carried over to this generation, even though we do all have mics. But I mean, it's really not <laughs> yeah. the best uh, mic. I mean, well, as far as the earpiece goes, the, the mic is actually di- not that bad. But it's just the earpiece is is pretty terrible. So I think that's you know p- part of the reason why people aren't just aren't nearly as social as they used to be. And I, it's the same on Xbox One too, like. Uh, it used to be Xbox 360 was a lot, way more people with mics, way more people talking. Um, but now, you know, even Xbox One is, is kind of, you know, it, people aren't turning on their mics anymore, it seems. It's kind of a bummer, for, you know, I think. But uh, I guess some people actually like it that way, so. Yeah, I feel like now we're in a more of a, of an, like a multiplayer that's a, like we're connected, but we're not really connected. Um, I can't think of the example, but I'm trying to think for like the past couple of minutes. Uh, I'm try, uh, trying to uh, name a game where we're connected, but we're not really playing with each other. Like, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, like, like a like Bloodborne type of yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, like how their multiplayer is like you're connected, but you're not really connected. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's like that. It's like more of an uh, asynchronous multiplayer is what seems to be the the big thing right now. Yeah, I think it's... Is that kind of how Watch Dogs was? Well, yeah, yeah, not, exactly. Like that, too. I wouldn't say Well, exactly, I mean, not in the same... because, you know, with Bloodborne, you can leave all the notes, and, like, you might see the ghost of another player randomly pop up, while Watch Dogs, um, it was pretty infrequent, but someone could come into your game to try to hack you. But it, it, it was really infrequent. Like, it did, for me, at least, and I always had it turned on to where they could do it. It, it really happened to me. Like, uh... I actually did like it. I think it because it didn't happen too much, and when it did happen, it was kind of fun. But um, yeah, like uh, I wouldn't really consider like Watch Dogs an always online game. I mean, even though it was completely optional, but even if you did have the online turned on, it still was. It it happened so infrequently that um, yeah, I'd consider it a little different. 
that uh, save uh, one. Right. Or, you know. I just played through, and it happened to me twice while I was playing. And I was I didn't know that that could even happen. I was so confused. Oh, I was really? confused as how this AI was like running away and switching cars and getting good cars <laughs> and what they how they were so smart. And then I, then I read about it online that that was actually a person. <laughs> yeah, because that was actually one of the things they were you know pushing. Uh, for the marketing of of that game, you know that was you know one of the things that they were harping upon when they were presenting it, like E three and stuff. Um, but it ended up being yeah. not like the one of the smaller parts of the game, which I think is a good thing because I think if they had it too much, then it would have just annoyed people, and then they would have turned it off, and then you know not get to experience it anymore. But I think I think they did it right with that in that respect. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think another example of that would be um, Need for Speed Most One. No, Rivals. Most Wanted. Rivals. That's what it was. Ri- Rivals. Rivals. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. That uh, wasn't that an always. I, I didn't play it, but wasn't that an always like, it like is, you're always yeah. co- like connected to people. Yeah. Yep. Um, I so you I can actually them. play it offline. So I mean, so I mean, it's not like uh-huh. the crew, but um, yeah, yeah. it was uh, like you, you were pretty much always put into a server with other players. I mean. It, it seemed like it, you could also choose to, you know, not be on a server with other players. You could choose to only allow friends to come into your world, I guess you'd call it. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, it, that was one of those games where it was co- always connected. Yeah. Hmm. And Drive Club, I know it was really pitched as like, you know, a very online centric game, but pretty much uh, there's just multiplayer. And then there's a lot of, like, leaderboard-related stuff and, you know, like, online challenges. It's not actually, like, you know, Need for Speed where you'll be randomly racing with other players or constantly connecting yeah. with other players. Which is kind of why it mm-hmm. surprised me that they had so much problems at the launch because other than just, just stat tracking and then the multiplayer mode, there wasn't really... It wasn't... I didn't really much see there. like there was much, but, I mean, I think a lot of developers nowadays are underestimating just how you know difficult it can be to create these you know interconnected ambitious online type games like i don't know if you guys heard about uh tetris ultimate but i mean that game didn't work at all for i guess like a couple months uh you know halo master chief um it seems like a lot of developers are having problems with the online aspects nowadays um so hopefully did you uh did you just listen to the kind of funny games cast? Um, I you I do listen to them regularly. I mean, I'm not sure. If, I haven't seen the most recent one. They just they do this talk past about week. That, they just yeah. touched on touched on that, and they talked about Master Chief Collection, and then they also talked about Tetris. And yeah, um, they've uh, gre- yeah how they didn't work. Yeah, ever since pod they were on podcast beyond, they've been mentioned Tetris, so that's where I actually got it from. But um. Because <laughs> they have, you know, it's Colin and Greg, so they have like two thousand friends, and I guess Tetris yeah. will try to constantly ping all their friends to get their data in it. I guess it just completely just slows Overloads. down the the game to a crawl, and they couldn't even play it. And, and that's just Tetris, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's like <laughs> I, I, that's a game I played <laughs> on Game Boy Color, like <laughs> you know what I mean? So. It's uh, yeah. I, th- I think a lot of developers are trying to go shoot for the moon as far as the online stuff, but they're, you know, underestimating that how all the problems that can arise and I don't know. I th- hopefully developers learn from the mistakes a lot of devs have been making as far as you know games coming out buggy, or unfinished because it seems like it's happened a lot in, um, you know, some, you know, like Battlefield Four getting sued because it came out so buggy and uh, it, it hopefully they'll learn their lesson and games will start to be a little more polished going forward. I hope. Hope so. Right. Although I don't, I'm not one of the people that get super upset when it does come out quote unquote unfinished, you know, uh, like drive club. I, I didn't care to be honest. I, I was just enjoying the single player of it. So, but I understand mm-hmm. how some other people can really be bothered by the fact that they pay for a game that isn't completely, you know, working. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's pretty good. You guys want to wrap it up here? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, well, that was the uh, the third or fourth fourth episode of the Kind of Funny, or not Kind of Funny, um, <laughs> PlayStation Lifestyle Community uh, Podcast. Um, uh, and uh, we'll be back next week. Uh, we usually record on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We haven't decided kind of where, if there's an official one we want to settle on, or if we just kind of want to go week by week. Um, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming.